I'm Delta Work, and it's time for Very Scary Delta, where it's Halloween all month long. Raja is here, but first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Are you a ghoulita like me? Do you want to suck blood like me? Do you wear a sexy nun costume just like me? Do you wear hypnotique at Halloween like me? Do you drink green jello shots like me? Do you love fun size candy like me? Well, if you do, then you must be very scary, Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Scary Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Scary Delta. Very Scary Delta is for the woman who, this year for Halloween, will be dressed as Patty Hughes from TV's Damages. But first, let's get into some things that are very Delta. Ghoul off, Delta! Let's talk about waiting in line. I want to talk about waiting in line and all of the weird moving parts and all the trajectories that sort of change depending upon how long the line is, who's in the line, and who shows up in the line that was never there before. Um, I always have so much anxiety when I'm in a line, say at Target or a grocery store, and someone comes up, maybe a person ahead of me or, or a few people ahead of me and joins the line with maybe like a, a little uh, a, a arm shopping basket while someone else has a push basket. And they just stand there and kind of like, like somebody was holding a spot for them, but you never knew that. And part of me wants to like immediately jump in and be like, you're cutting the line. But at the same time, maybe I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that they are having the same transaction together and this person just brought a few more things. But I've seen it happen time and time again where they end up being two completely separate transactions and that person just didn't want to have to get in line behind everybody else. And I just feel like it's like generally super fucked up, but it's such a gray area where you don't really know like... Do I say something? Am I blowing it out of proportion? I mean, it wouldn't be uncommon for me to blow it out of proportion, but like, I feel like you should speak up for yourself. The same way I have that same anxiety when someone says to me, oh, oh, I forgot the celery. Can you hold my spot in line? And then they take off. And then you're like thinking, do I have to say to everyone that comes back in line, oh, there was a lady. She had to leave for celery. She'll be right back. I just wanted to let you know when she does come up, she's not cutting in line. Because then as soon as they come back in line, people will look at you like, oh, you let people cut? And you're like, um, no, before you got here, she was in line, but she just stepped out and it's not really disturbing the line. She's just coming back in because that little gap, that little space are closed up, but it has to open back up so she can be in there. And you feel like your people are thinking, I feel like people are thinking, what a pushover. Why are you just letting some lady cut? And I, in my mind, they're not cutting because they were already in line and they haven't gotten to that point yet. But it brings me so much anxiety because I think, I don't know, it's just an item and it's not really changing how many transactions you're going to have to wait for. It's the same amount of transactions, whether you were or were not in line. But then suddenly, I don't know, am I a people pleaser? Like, is it that why, is that why I'm so concerned about what those people think? Is it, it's something that just, it, just the anxiety that comes from this unspoken responsibility that like, I don't know, this is a group project and I'm going to be in trouble for not speaking up about the whole situation. It just, it seems like there should be a way around that, like a, like a marker. You know, I've, I don't fly on Southwest airlines because, um, has nothing to do with, uh, uh, anything other than the service I experienced in the past. And that stays with me. Um, but one of the things that I'm glad that I don't have to experience on that airline is uh, the idea that um, you have to board and like pick your seat, right? So 
I am someone who does not like taking up more space than I have paid for. So if I feel like I'm good, that's why I fly on JetBlue or I fly first class everywhere. That's just the way it is. If you're somebody who's watching this and you're like, oh, you must like first class. I don't like hogging up somebody else's fucking space. So if my arm is on the armrest, I feel like it's a shared space. If somebody thinks I'm spilling into their spot, well, then that's why I moved to, uh, that's why I purchased first class because it's perfectly, I don't need extra leg room. I need extra ass room. We've covered this. So I've been on Southwest Airlines and they, everyone says they have a wonderful uh, a, a policy, a person of size policy or whatever. And their thing is you buy it, an additional seat and then they give you a little marker that's that you put in there that's like, I'm not really sitting here, but it seems like I'm spilling into that seat. And then if nobody uses that seat, they refund your money. Sounds like a great policy. However, the problem with that is that when someone comes up and they say, oh, I'd like to sit there, you have to all of a sudden defend it and go, oh, actually, sorry, I'm so fat that I had to buy two seats, and um, but they're going to refund my money. So you technically could sit here, but I technically paid for it. So like I, I got to put a little marker that says reserved seat. So you have to answer for it. And I feel like that little marker is that same fucking anxiety. Like maybe we need something that goes in the middle of the aisle that says someone's using that. So that I don't have to say something someone's using that was a shopping cart is empty, but it's going to be occupied by another shopping cart momentarily. When the person comes back, the same thing with that person of size storyline or whatever. I don't want to have to hold up a marker and be like, Oh, hi. Oh, sorry. I'm fat. Um, don't sit here, please. Oh, okay. And then, have to have the flight attendant come over and go, oh, that person is a person of size. You're going to have to move because they technically paid for it. And then the person goes, well, why did you pay for it? I can sit here comfortably. And then you have to explain to them, well, I'm really sorry, but you know, there's a person of size policy. And then it's up to the, the flight crew to come over and decide whether or not you are encroaching on someone else's space so legitimately that you'd have to possibly purchase. It's a whole thing. Okay. It's the anxiety that comes from I'm a firm believer in taking up the space that you need. And I mean that like figuratively. Uh, and if it and if it means personally, then it means personally. Uh, whether it's I need to take up this space to go get the celery. Do you mind letting, you know, when people come in defending that I was here? I don't mind doing that. It does bring me anxiety, but I'm going to do it. The same thing goes for those damn seats. I don't want to have to hold. It's like you're holding up a piece of paper that's like, like this next to you. And people come by and you're like, Oh, reserved reserve. Really reserved for what you can't, this is free boarding. This is open boarding. Who is that reserved for? It is. There's so much. That's what I'm telling you. I mean, I would rather just go to self checkout and I would rather sit in fucking first class. That's just the, that's how I resolve the problem. And that first class seat, you know what? It's going to be $1,500 to fly across the country or it's going to be $2,000. Well, I mean, if you want me to come, you want me to come to your city or whatever, that's what's going to have to be paid because I'm not going to be made uncomfortable. I'm not going to have this conversation. I'm not going to hold up uh, uh, pieces of paper. The same thing in line. If I'm in line and somebody somebody needs me to do them that favor, I don't mind stepping in for them because I don't I, I don't want them to have to come in and defend themselves. It just seems so it is nerve wracking, but I feel like there's ways around it. But it's so fucking it, it brings so much anxiety, so much anxiety. Hmm. Do you want to see me take a break? Because I think you want to see me take a break. Hi, can you hear me? You're welcome, everyone. You know, I have a mosquito bite on my wrist. I was at Jules house yesterday and she has a big, you know, that big garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a mosquito bite there. Bitch, mosquitoes? 
list. I don't understand. I'm supposed to be like, I'm from the tropics. Right. But mosquitoes fucking live for me. They live for both of us. And this will be around other people and they won't attack other people. I don't know what it I is personally, about us. I personally think it's because I have so much sugar in my um, bloodstream because I drink such excessive amounts of wine. Oh, and I probably have a lot because I'm obese. You know what I mean? So all the like, same. Right. It's all the same. I will have a lot of sugar in my tank and I always want sugar in my bowl. Mm-hmm. You ever want sugar in your bowl? I would love a bowl. Oh, you well, got one? Yeah. Have you had Blue Dream or Purple Cream? I've had Blue Dream, Blue Dream, but Blue Dream is a, um, it's a sativa, I think. So I don't oh. really do do that. Do have that. you ever do used, that? Do that. Have you ever used Sentiva, which is like a Clorox uh, cleaning product that smells like different things? So it's like not Sativa, but it's Sentiva. Well, here's the thing. I don't even buy my own cleaning supplies anywhere because I have a housekeeper. Right. We so, were, so, we're there, so so there's we've that. elevated. <laughs> are we? How are we doing? We're great. Let's you think we should do that? So we're doing a we're gonna do the uh, a podcast with a visual element or a talk show with an audio podcast element. Oh, I've never been here before. Right, I have no idea what's I know. going well, on. Well, that's new. This is this is this is de- we've we've. You're also uh, Dark Harvest. You heard about that? You see where you're at. Dark Harvest. You ready? Yes. Okay. You feel, good? Yeah, feel good. Energy up. Sit up with your mouth. Sit up with your mouth. Speak, from your chest. Speak from your chest. Okay, and we're doing this. We're moving forward, gaily forward, not straight. Um, I feel good. Are all these lit up? Everyone's lit. Everyone's lit. lit. You're sure? I'm lit as fuck. Before there was very Delta, there was very that. The mom podcast I co-hosted with one of my dearest friends, mommy dearest friends, who uh, we knew long before we were friends on RuPaul's Drag Race. And she's here now. The hey. glorious, the beautiful, the lovely, the Halloweeny Raja. Hi. <laughs> How though? I think we should. There, there needs to be a new high. There, there needs to be like a new drag greeting. Like hi is so tired now. Right. A lot of people lay claim to it. I personally think it's originally on China. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But other people do it as well. But what would be another one? Um. Sup, faggot. Oh. <laughs> huh. Sup. <laughs> <laughs> Sup, my guy. Sup, big big guy. But, big, big bud. What's up? You were on the eighth episode of Very Delta, which was still in sort of the infancy of like, it was a transitional time. We didn't know like you were traveling. You had just won mm-hmm. um, Queen of the World or what, what was what was the title? Uh, Queen of She Done Already Done fucking had hers. Right. Yeah. Which I, you know, I don't think I get any credit for this, but I um, uh, foreshadowed all of this on season three of RuPaul's Drag Race when they did like the little um, scrabbly thing or whatever and you had to figure yeah. it out. And I yeah. said, she done already had her ziz. Uh-huh. And a lot of the girls had never heard that phrase before, but that's a RuPaul, like RuPaul says that. Right. And it obviously comes from other places too. So I feel like I foreshadowed your win. Just well, saying. Well, let's, let's just ask RuPaul what she thinks. Right. Anything? Nothing. 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 Silence. Yeah. Silence. NDA. Silence! NDA. I've made my decision. <laughs> NDA. NDA. <laughs> what do you think, Rue? Yeah, NDA. This is now episode 65 of the show. Yeah, honestly, yeah. like, um, I went I went on a very Delta marathon because, first of all, I have told you numerous times i th- n- numerous times mm-hmm. i've told you how incredibly proud i am of you and the 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 trajectory and magnitude of what this this show has become and i think it's so fucking cool and when i and i did a marathon the other day where i watched multiple episodes in a row and just you know in my peripheral as i was crafting and mm-hmm. uh, laying around cleaning smoking weed doing whatever it was on all day long and i have i by happenstance I'm not looking for my episode on it watched my episode and my biggest regret of that episode was that i that i didn't show up and drag but I'm also a very lazy queen, you know, like, well, I just, like I was like trying to get away with it and just be like, but I'm non-binary. 
I think even though you are like such a visual person and people love seeing the visual of you because it, it, it's uh, it's always a story. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? There's always a, thought, a lot of thought that goes into it. I think there are certain people and certain personalities that whether or not they are in like a, a really amplified drag, mm -hmm. there's still always that personality, right? Right. But there are some people that we know that will... It only turns on, quote unquote, for them, uh, their confidence, maybe when they're fully done up in a female form or, or, sure. or something like that. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Not I mean, me. everyone's quote Not unquote me. drag it's is the, different. It's the same fucking person. That's what I time, always say so, about right. both of us yeah. and a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, shout out. Shout out to your fucking prosthetics right now. Speaking of characters mm -hmm. and like getting into character. This is incredible. Uh, I did this all myself. Um, no, yeah. I didn't do any of this myself. My friend Edwin did this. Edwin is it's a so makeup good. artist and does from beauty to to prosthetic to everything. Yeah. And um, so Edwin did all of this. This is my dream. You know, it's my favorite episode of Twilight Zone. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Which is hard to narrow down because we like grew up with Twilight Zone marathon. Fuck yes. So we know a lot of the episodes and um, I don't know if you have any specific favorite things to remember from Twilight Zone, but this was definitely one of them because mm -hmm. I mean, as a kid, it scared the shit out of me. There was also Talking Tina that like yeah. freaked me out. Um, uh, quite a few. Maybe those two are the top, the top two that I remember the most, but the, the, the pig faced alien people. Yeah. I love aliens, uh, right? Or so it was like another. The idea was that uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Right. So that's the name of the episode is Eye of the Beholder. Okay. So if enough people believe that looking like this is normal, mm -hmm. then the idea is not looking like this right. is abnormal. Such a yeah. good, good, good like, yeah. classic. You know what else is a good one? After Hours, which is about mannequins that come to life one day out of the year. And they get to like go around and do stuff and 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 live in a department store, and then at the end they have to like go away and oh, another one gets to come that out. One. Yeah, yes. that's a yeah. super good one. This time of year is like, you know, it, it's. I feel like Halloween is if it's in your if you like Halloween and it's in your heart, it's all year round. Yeah, and that's always been us in different ways because you know it could be in a purse or it could be in a full piece of art. Uh huh. Right. I mean, uh -huh. you're such an artist. Are there things that stick out for you that you keep all year round that are Halloween related? Well, I remember like being, uh, I came to the U.S. in 1984 and I was about nine years old. And before that in Indonesia, we didn't have Halloween. So when, as soon as I came back to the States, getting to experience Halloween was fucking rad. Mm -hmm. And my very first costume that I wore were those plastic ones that just had a front and a back. And then you got like the generic mask that yeah. went over it. My very first American, like our Halloween in America, I wore one of those plastic cops costumes and I went to school on Halloween as Garfield. Oh my God. Even the, even the simplest yeah. of that costume you know, front and back, just kind of, you just slip the whole thing on, was so exciting to me that I got to wear a costume. So that, to me, is one of my greatest memories. And then from then on, I kind of did my own Halloween costumes as soon as my mom introduced me to thrift shopping. And I was like, well, next year I want to be a scarecrow. There was one point, too, in that same year that I was Garfield, my intention was, because I had seen someone do this, uh, I wanted to be a girl for Halloween mm -hmm. and I designed, uh, I, I drew out what I wanted and I wanted to wear a bathing suit. Okay. Am I trans? I mean, I think it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a, a spectrum, I think for all of us. Right. And I'm not even being funny about it. I think it's a real, it's a real thing that we can address in 2023. Right. That there is, there's space for all of us where it's, whether it's something that you realize um, in a physical form, uh -huh. a mental form. I mean, I, I, we've always said that we are, um, we are like two spirited anyway. Right. We're definitely that way. I mean, right. we've seen each other from you know late '90s to now, and 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 worked at all the same places and done the same things. Like maybe yeah. in, maybe in different ways, but. Like anytime we'll, we'll joke about like a shoe or something. We're like, oh, this is the Peanuts shoe or this is the Pride <laughs> shoe or this uh -huh. is the whatever. Like we just were talking about that in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe on some level we are. I don't know. I I mean, that was definitely I, I wish I still had that drawing. I must have it somewhere. But it was a, a, real, a really simple nine year old drawing that I did of, my, you know, of myself as a girl. And I wanted to be like I wanted to wear a bathing suit and have like really long hair. Mm hmm. And, 
of course that didn't happen. So I, and instead I was a scarecrow, which was a really fun outfit to make when I was like 10 years old the following year. Right. And but just, eventually you did dress up as a scarecrow as an adult at some point, And you also dressed up as a girl in a bathing suit with long hair. I dress up like a scarecrow girl every day. <laughs> a scarecrow girl. <laughs> every day. A girl crow. <laughs> um, it's not like I haven't seen you. Yeah. But people haven't seen you on the show. Where, 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 what's been going on? Where have you been? Honestly, I don't have really much to say. Yeah. I, I mean, I've gone like all over the world, especially in this particular year. There's, there's definitely some good stamps on my passport. But, um, you know, just gigging. Mm -hmm. um, but I have been so like pulling back a little bit mm -hmm. and just trying to enjoy my life. I think for the last 13 years after being on Drag Race, I've just been on the go trying to keep up with all the other girls, try, whatever, just busy, too busy, 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 busy. And I've been trying to make a lot of more time of just fucking enjoying sitting on my ass and understanding that I have ADHD and mm -hmm. nourishing that and, and, um, and just fucking staying at home. Right. Is you, that, is, I mean, I feel like I feel like people might be disappointed to hear that, but there's there's a lot of in those quiet times when I'm at home is when my most creative ideas, whether they are outlandish or not, the the craziest ideas come, and I and I and I just I'm just enjoying that process. I you know I've shared that I moved recently into a, a larger apartment space. I'm just enjoying that, mm -hmm. honestly. Like friends who come to LA, they're like, "Where are you performing in LA?" And I'm like, "I don't. I just." You know, I get I, I make enough money to sustain my um, slightly expensive habits, but really just enough. I just do enough, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, there are things going on like I'm coming out like this fall during this time. Um, I'm working on getting a new wine line coming out instead of doing the white wine that we did in the beginning. We're doing a red one to mm -hmm. go with the fall season and the holiday season. But honestly, I'm just trying to figure out who the fuck I am. After all these years of doing this, I just, I'm like, who am I? What am I doing? What am I doing with this? What is significant about this or important? What is, is it? Do I still like it? You know, so all the, I'm just kind of sitting around thinking about what I have to do. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit of a luxury, I think, um, to get that time off because a lot of people work, you know, two jobs and stuff. And and, and, I, and I, I do appreciate that luxury of just getting to sit around and just kind of figuring it out. You know, I don't I don't really have anything to report. It's not like I'm you right. know, getting invited to the Matt Gala or any, any shit like that. I'm I'm doing a lot of sitting at home. But the red wine, because see, originally when you would drink wine, I always assumed like because I know very little about wine. I always imagine that white wine represents like. This sort of like happy, sunny joy, uh, and I always think of red wine as like full bodied, and it's somebody who's like really introspective. And I think of you as a full bodied, introspective. Da da da. Yeah. That's the personality that I think of. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe people see you different ways. So when you when you came out with the white wine, I was like, okay. Well, I mean, there's another part of her personality. I'm not saying she's not a happy person. Well, white but... wine is the thing that I consume most because I always want to, because, you know, my birthday's in the summer. I love I love the idea of light, crisp, mm -hmm. uh, summery, you know, idea. So I like to live summer all year round. So I constantly do drink and enjoy white wine. Mm -hmm. But I also love red wine. And I love red wine in the fall. And there's, there's a, a romanticism to it. Right. That's also, what I think. Also, red wine is also very biblical. You know, when Jesus turned water into wine, mm -hmm. he didn't make a fucking Chardonnay. He made a, a red, dark wine. You know, th that's what they drank. Right. Nobody, nobody was thinking about like spritzers or champagne. That, that, that just did not fucking exist. So red wine is also very biblical, which also like lends itself to the, the holiday season, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, the color. The color. Sangre. Mm -hmm. Very blood-like, you know. It's just sexy. I think red wine is very sexy. And... You need to follow this account on TikTok that's like about Egyptology. And there are um, the researchers pull up like documents that they found where it's like someone's birthday invitation or someone's uh, a lease for something. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking about the romanticism and religion and like uh, we both love the idea of mm -hmm. all of that and how far back it goes. Right. Yeah, you would, I'm going to send you a couple of videos, but um, let's take a break. Ah! 
Oh my god. I have a heart condition. Please. Oh my god. Stop. <laughs> I have a heart condition. <laughs> oh my god. That is amazing. I cannot believe you guys said Orville Peck. <laughs> <laughs> but when it pops back up, we have to like put that together. Please make welcome for Halloween, Orville Peck. And RuPaul. And RuPaul. Oh my God. <laughs> and we are back with my extra special guest and my friend. And uh, I mean, I could give you a million titles. It's like, it... oh my God. For fuck's sake. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Our extra special guest, Pumpkin Orville Peck. Yes, Pumpkin Peck. And who else? And RuPaul. <laughs> In the thread of not naming names because we don't want anyone to feel bad. Okay, okay. Um, when we were on Drag Race together, there were many times when we would just get in. Oh my God. I'm not doing that. That's your movement. Yeah. That's what your, am I supposed to do? Just I sit still? Yes, behave. I think it's on like a it's on a timer. It's uh, not on a timer. It's your movement because you're not behaving. <laughs> um there were many times that um we would laugh about things and it's Oh my god. <sighs> Unplug it. How did that right there there's a little thing probably coming out of the back. The do you see it coming out of the back? Yank that bitch out. Distracting. Uh, I don't know. Make her stop. Many, too much work. How do we make I'll her deal stop? with it. I'll deal with You'll it. deal with it? She's going to keep interrupting our conversations. <laughs> what? <laughs> Rue, help us. Like, oh, God. <laughs> it's a haunted set, I told you. <laughs> Everything is haunted. How do I just... What if I just throw it against the wall and then it just breaks? I mean, You're going to kill me. No, I would never do that. This is precious precious it's brand new how do you see there's a cord coming out of it that you probably or a switch on it don't you think oh see you broke it no you fucking broke it i love it. that it has like, like the seeds in there that's really yeah that's a great do detail. you like seed <laughs> oh big <laughs> do you take seed wow are you grateful for seed no honestly how the fuck do you turn this thing off we really do need it off that was fun help <laughs> hey Pumpkin Peck is really out of hand today. Pumpkin she is, Peck. She is. She needs to quit it. Not wanting to name names or anything, so we're not naming the pumpkins and who they look like and who's trying to make a comeback. But when we were on Drag Race, some of my best experiences were... Mm. Um, laughing uncontrollably because that's my favorite feeling right you know, an orgasm could be a favorite feeling um uh, um some people for being sad is a, a great feeling for them i don't know why maybe um i like feeling sad you do yeah but i love uncontrollable laughter where no matter how hard you try <laughs> you cannot stop laughing yeah and there was a moment where they were like look you know we were behind those whatever those cardboard doors are that are supposed to look real uh -huh. and they swing open and they have someone pulling it shut uh -huh. and they were like you guys have to come you really have to be serious and we were like we're trying our best and i think like you're that person where when people say um when you go to an event who is somebody that you can't sit by <laughs> like and i have to sit by you but at the same time i i probably shouldn't yeah because everything will be ridiculous and no matter how old we get and no matter how many experiences we have well, like we're always thirteen about mm -hmm. what's funny. Yeah, and it's like when you get when you get caught laughing in church and you can't stop. <laughs> you know, it's that all the time, and um, and I live for that. But do you remember there was a like there was a mo we we don't have to say her name, a person's name. It wasn't anybody on Drag Race, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was a person that. <laughs> Okay, so we both have our own problems. We've had our own <laughs> dental issues. We're not making fun of anybody for having a dental issue, okay? My teeth are wooden. She'll tell you her own stories about her own teeth. But there was just this person that was really doing the most. You know when somebody is like, they think they're the manager of everything and the director and they know the adjacencies and they know fucking everything. <laughs> and they also are talking to like two grown adults and they're like at this point, mid to late thirties and talking to us like children yeah. in a way. And we were like, knock it off. And this person just had 
the snaggle tooth of life. Like I mean to tell you, and I'm not fucking with your. Well, you're my, saying tooth like like you're like it's a singular thing. There, right. It was plural. Right. Yeah. There was it, it was tooths. issues. It was, it was like hoofs. when this thing popped open, it was like that. <laughs> and so we started joking about like we would like put our like put our finger like here and be like, oh, my gosh, did you? Hey, I wanted to talk to you for a minute. And then that would get a chuckle from one another. And then it would be like, um hey and then like this would be here so it would be like suggesting to one another like i can one up you on how big the tooth is and then there was a point where we came out from the hotel to wait for the bus and i was like you guys where's rasha i can't find rasha and they're like she's outside i don't know where she is and i come outside and i'm like i don't see her they're like she's around the corner and I go around the corner and here's the wall and Raja just has her face against I wish the building. Could, against the building as if the whole building was a tooth. Is the tooth. <laughs> but it gets better than that. Because we still can't calm down. We finally calm down and we get in the fucking <laughs> And we're talking and Rue is at each station going, Delta, tell me about what you're gonna be wearing. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be wearing this, you know, uh, this smart pantsuit from Kohl's on the runway. And I'm gonna be whatever I'm fucking saying, right? <laughs> Raja goes running across the room. It's all serious business with a plus size mannequin pushed down to this level. She has her mouth on the top of the mannequin and is pushing it with her mouth. And everyone's like, what is happening? And we could not. Do you remember every second of this? It's yes. foul. <laughs> Uh, this is what I'm saying I, I, I see I can control myself now because I'm a professional I'm a talk show host but um, you can't you control yourself you know because you're a freelance artist <laughs> so you can't control yourself but I wanted you to laugh I wanted you to feel good um, oh my god you're so fucking stupid but is it true Did it's it, so true it's true and we still do it yeah honestly 13 years later I'll be like <laughs> right Hey. Against your car. <laughs> Bye. That's so sad. Somebody could probably pull up the call sheet and they'd know who we're talking about. That's fucked up. Whatevs. Whatever. Who cares? Fuck her. Fuck her. She didn't give a shit about us. Did she? Fuck them all. I don't know. Whatever. There was people that we liked, but then there's people that we were like, bitch, get out of here. With mm -hmm. that bullshit. Um, this is your Halloween costume for this episode, by the way. Yes. Explain, it. Explain your outfit to us. Well, okay. So I am goth, right? Oh, you are goth. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. But this is like me reverting. Like, lately, I've been reverting and, like, going back to the things that I really love. Reverta like, flack. Re I am reverta flack. Uh-huh. And I've been going back to, to these concepts and style choices that were very much what I grew up with and mm -hmm. loved about, like, that excite me, mm -hmm. you know? And being goth was definitely, like, the thing that I wanted to, like, fully express when I was in high school. And because my parents were, like, kind of religious, I never really got to, like, go full strength. And so this Halloween costume is basically me as the girl I wanted to be when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And it's also based on a girl that I had a alleged, you know, like a crush, a uh, faggot crush on mm -hmm. um, named Anna Martin Del Campo. Okay. And she, like, wore a bob and she was, like, the perfect goth girl. She kind of gave me, like, Annie Potts in... um. Uh, pretty in pink. My favorite. You know, my favorite. Yeah, and she was. She had a purple bob, and she always had like the, the spikes and like rosaries and the thing. So I, I, I just went with a theme. I don't. I don't. Know, I don't really know what my costume is. Maybe right. my costume is just like the fifteen-year-old me that I wanted to be. Yeah. I even have a lunch pail. I have a collection of vintage lunch pails. This one's Snow White, Disney. That's super cute. There's nothing in it. Would you go trick or treating with me? I would absolutely go trick or treating. Do people still do that? I find I think that's kind of dangerous. It is. People do trunk or treat. Do you know what that is? That sounds even more dangerous. Uh, it, that's where all the perverts are, I believe. But um, what you, what they do is they go to a church okay. where the perverts are, and oh um, the, you open up your trunk, and then your kids can go around and trick or treat there. And I think that is actually kind of does sound creepier because I feel like you're fully inviting somebody into that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I don't know. 
Do I mean, when a- we were kids, that there was the danger of like, ooh, what if they put a razor blade in like the candy? Or but like- you know what? Like that's so weird. Like, do you remember like, kids when we were like, they would say, like, stay away from drugs and the gateway drug and the this and that. No one's giving away drugs. Like, never <laughs> has anyone been. I've never been somewhere where people are like, I spent all this money on drugs. I want to give this away to you. In fact. I'm going to push you into this stall and force you to take my expensive drugs. Yeah. No one's putting cocaine in their, in the kids no. candy. No. That, and as many times as we've valuable. been told, like, stop, drop and roll. Like, where are the fires? <laughs> There's no fires. We do like, <sighs> so, like uh, learning how to square dance and shit like that. Why weren't we taught how to do our taxes? Where did you learn how to square dance? Um, I went to a lot of different schools. You know, I moved around a lot when I was a kid. And they made you square dance? We had that as like an elective thing. Like we also had like, um, uh, we had sewing class. Okay, I would do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I loved that. it. Yeah. Of course, we yeah. made book covers. I made a burnt velvet book cover and I kept it forever. It was so pretty. Oh. And I also um, crocheted my mom a makeup bag for her um, for her makeup pencils and brushes. And it was like this long, way too long, right? She kept it for years. Oh my God, yeah. how cute. What kind of Halloween candy do you like? Um. Okay, we were just talking about this in the back. Um, candy corn, if I have a mood, but really I go for like, I love... Um, I love chocolate. So mm-hmm. like the Milky Ways, like the little mini bars. Oh God, why are you gross? But, a Milky Way doesn't have anything it. in it. Mija, listen, listen. Butterfingers, uh, Three Muskets, anything that has chocolate in it. You I'm just gonna... mentioned two of the grossest candies. Those are the last ones. The Milky Way and the... and the. And I'm just the... saying anything that has chocolate in it, I will probably fucking eat. Oh, so you don't eat nut. Is that I eat nut. I eat nut. Bitch, I eat nut. <laughs> you better eat nut. I ain't not. You have to go Reese's, Snickers. Uh, I don't have I don't... any particular order, but you know, okay. So my immediately, if I if there was like a pile of chocolate right, candies, that's what I'm talking about. If I had a pile of chocolate candies, it would be Twix, Kit Kat, right? That's my. I first. love those. But then everything else is just fine too. It would go Twix, Kit Kat, uh, Butterfinger. Um. Than the other ones that you hate. You are such an anomaly. I've known you for so long, and I, every day I have new questions about what do you mean? why you operate the way that you do. I don't know. I just know you to be somebody who, like, maybe I shouldn't be surprised because I know you will, like, and this is no offense. This is like a, 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 a uh, this is an attribute to your personality. You will try any food. Oh, absolutely. And I love that about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You nothing scares you off. And no. um, something I think a lot of people could learn, myself included, just because I'm so fucking stuck up about things. Um. Um, nothing is shocking to you when it comes to food. Like some people go, no. "Ew, gross! I don't want to eat that from that culture." And it's like, why are like that's? It is super disrespectful to say that about somebody else's food. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it never, it never dawns on you to be grossed out by stuff. Not at all. I was in Taiwan this year, and one of their their famous like cuisines that they have there is this thing called stinky tofu. Have you okay. ever heard of it? No. It is tofu that's absolutely fermented okay. till it's like almost like to a rotting point. Mm-hmm. But it's fermented. So, um, you know, people eat fermented foods all over the sure. world. Um, and I had stinky tofu, but not only it was a soup and there was uh, fried stinky tofu in it. And there was also curdled uh, blood in it. OK. So like gelatinous mm-hmm. um, chunks of blood in it. Mm-hmm. And it was delicious. It probably was. I loved it. I loved it. it I loved it. Very Halloween. I loved it. Let's take a break. (laughs) I loved it. I loved it. Energy up. Uh huh. Do it with your face. Sit up with your mouth. Sit up with your mouth. Energy up. Woo! We are back with Raja. You know, this is the part of the podcast where uh, people send in letters. It's Read Me Delta. Read Me Delta. Um, and if you have uh, a question or a quandary or a query or you are queer, you can send your uh, letters to readmedelta at gmail.com. Um, I would say if you have like comments, but I don't really like comments yeah you fuck comments yeah don't send any comments no. um the first letter is here in the buar bag
I just want the camera to get the, the authenticity of these skull boots that I got. Let me see. I couldn't afford these in high school, but. Where are those from? They're cool. I think I got I don't even want to, don't answer. You know why? Because we have spent our lives with so many people gatekeeping where we can get shit. Mm -hmm. I think some of the shit that you have, you could gatekeep. I'm not even going to gatekeep this because I don't even think the store exists anymore. But I got these at Trash and Vaudeville in New York City, oh, which is now gone. Okay. So no gatekeeping. I think th there's a location somewhere. But anyway. I don't like to gatekeep. But sometimes when I think like I want to have my moment with something that I bought, mm -hmm. then I'm like, let me just let me get some use out of it. And yeah. then when people ask, I'll tell them. It doesn't yeah. happen often, but you know. Yeah. Dear Delta and Sassy Friend, Ooh. what do you think are the top three best salad dressings for Halloween? Ooh, okay. Rank them in order. Okay. Thank okay. you for everything. Mistress Blundhaven. Miss, Mistress Mistress who? Blundhaven? Blundhaven? Blundhaven. Wants to know what our best salad dressings are for the fall. Okay, okay. salad dressings for the fall. I think it depends on what kind of salad you're having in the fall. Right. I think of like, um, I think of the oh, fall. Oh, for the, for the hall, for Halloween. For Halloween. For Halloween. Right. Okay. But it's, Halloween's in the fall. It's in the fall. But like for the fall, I think of like, like more like classic American hearty salads, like pasta salads maybe, mm -hmm. or is that summer? Is that no, summer? It could be, it could be fall. Maybe like a, like a roasted vegetable that's kind of I like that. cooled off, you know what I'm saying? Like something that has a char, but still cold as a salad. But the dressing might have to be as simple as like a balsamic. Mm -hmm. Balsamic, right? Okay. Again, like that whole like red wine fermenty. Um, but I'm straight up blue cheese all the time. All the time. I will dip French fries. I will dip like I just love pungent cheesy dressing over mm -hmm. a salad of any form. You ever oh. go to Lucille's Barbecue? It's a chain restaurant of like Southern barbecue offerings. Is it here in California? Yeah, there's there's a few around. Um, I I go to one in Long Beach Town Center, and what mm -hmm. I love about their blue cheese dressing is when they bring the dressing out. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes if somebody at the table gets ranch and someone gets blue cheese, they'll get confused, right? Because they kind of look similar, so you have to right. smell them. What they do is they bring them out in the same sort of container. But they take the the extra time to get blue cheese crumbles from Ooh. the wedge salad area and sprinkle them on top of the dressing so you right. can visually tell that there's not just that, but they're also mixed in. I know. I, I, I watched an episode where you really like shamed the wedge and you were so against it and like almost violent. Uh -huh. um, and I want to tell you right to your face right now, uh -huh. I disagree. I don't remember. Dis do I dislike the wedge? You were like, "What is the point? Fucking hate it. Why don't oh, they slice the lettuce?" Oh, there's too much work that goes in. Why yeah. would you? Yeah, come on. But I mean, like, what's so hard of, about just picking up a wedge of lettuce and dipping it? Because that's how I eat it. I just fucking pick it up with my hand. Well, you're from a cave, first of well, all. Well, I use my feet too. Right. My feet can grip right. things. So right, you've made tamales with me, and you tried to mix the meat in the bathtub. So I get it. Again, shaming. I don't do that. It's the shaming. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> um, salad dressings, I, I think, for the fall. Mm -hmm. I think um, I like something smoky. Mm. Mm. Like so, what, though? Well, maybe like a chipotle dressing, like oh. mixed mixed into oh. something. And then I, a, a salad always has to have seeds on it for me. I need pumpkin Sunflower, seeds. Sunflower, pumpkin. All of it. I love Cranberries that. Cranberries can start coming into right. it. Because we like nut. Mm, we like nut in our gut. I want you to nut in my gut. I like nut. So I think a chipotle dressing really, really takes it there. Um, I'm not a fan of honey mustard. Some people like it. You know, I don't hate it. I just don't honey think... Honey mustard is for fried animal dipping flesh. Dipping things. Yeah, like, like uh, mm -hmm. you know, chicken, I agree. chicken thing. I think we're both going to say blue cheese is going to rank probably first, but that's all year I round. like it because it ranks, you know? It's ranked. It's a little like poop. poop. Well, we were talking earlier about the food that you were eating and the, the, the ancient tofu or whatever that Stinky like... Stinky tofu, yeah. 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 And so some people might, you know, their initial reaction, because they're not around it, uh -huh. Ew, that's gross, I would never. And then they're going to order blue cheese dressing for their salad. So it's like, you Dude. have been around it, baby. You get this concept. You just... Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you like green goddess dressing? I've had it, and there's something about when something is very savory, but then there's like a sweetness, it turns me off. Mm-hmm. Um, like a Caesar. Do I, do I have a Caesar dressing with? I think I have a Caesar oh, a dressing Caesar. with me. Uh, this is a Ken Steakhouse uh, creamy Caesar. You like? You love Ken? I never heard of Ken uh, Steakhouse. I, I like. I like them. You know what's interesting about them is for the packaging. You know, black and gold. And hunter green packaging says rich to me. That says money. And especially when what, this, what are the colors again? Hunter green? Hunter and... green, black, and gold. Uh, and then when you put a font uh-huh. in there like that, that sort of 80s right, Garfield right. kind of font. Mm-hmm. And then this has got all this embroidery around the side. Embroidery. This is rich. Mm-hmm. But the interesting thing about Ken's is this really is about under $4. Wow. So it's not that expensive. Where do you get it at? You can get this at um, Stater Brothers. You can get this at Target, um, Walmart. You can get this anywhere, really. Um, You can get it at IGA grocery stores. Um, Anyway. All of those things you've listed, I have no idea what those things are. Well, because you um, ordered Uber Eats for everything. (laughs) We talked about that. Right? Yeah. You said you order you like to order Taco Bell on Uber Eats, but then why you know it's gonna get there and it's all flabby. My only two grocery spots are Uber Eats and Trader Joe's. Right. And they yeah. I bet you have And I love and I love like Asian specific Asian markets like H Mart or like a Thai market or like a I bet you that... Trader Joe's has has Halloween salad dressings or fall salad dressings. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? Absolutely. They'll probably have like pumpkin ranch, you know, they'll like oh, do some, they, they, they get down. Like we always talk about Starbucks as like the pumpkin spice, pumpkin uh-huh. flavor thing, but Trader Joe's goes a little too far for me, you know. Well, the the thing about that, you asked about the green goddess, it's the same, same thing with Caesar. I need it to be sort of like, I need it to be tart and, and savory, mm-hmm. but when I taste something and there's that little bit of like sweetness, ugh, I can't do it. This this gives me what I need though. Which um, one is that? Caesar, okay. I creamy l- Caesar. Love Caesar. Is what we're talking about. Love okay. Caesar dressings. Um, wait, you said you Uber eat. Do you, does your food get flabby when you your Taco Bell when you when you get it from Uber Eats? Or? Oh yeah, I just I d- please anyone out there who's listening to this, watching this, just never ever. Get Taco Bell on Uber Eats. Like right. it's just a bad idea, because specifically they asked how many hot sauces I want, and when I eat Taco Bell, I need an excessive amount of hot sauce. I'm salivating thinking about it because mm-hmm. I love the hot sauce, and I wish they actually bottled it like that dressing where you they can kindly like, do. They have some. Just put it all over, right? On the Uber Eats, they asked how many Diablo sauces I wanted. I marked twenty. For three items, including a crunch wrap, a bean and cheese burrito with sour cream and red sauce, uh-huh. and um, a chicken quesadilla. Uh-huh. That, uh, literally, I could probably do 30 sauces, 30 right. Diablos, but I was like right. being really like, let's not be too much, like uh-huh. don't be extra. So I went for 20. Guess how many they fucking put in the bag when I, when they showed up? I already up? know because I could tell you off the top of my head. I already know how they, they fuck people over. Four. Yep. Four. Yep. For three full items of Taco Bell menu, four, like, and you can't yelp. You can't, like, be, like, complain about it and be like, where's my 16 other sauces? Right. There's no one's, you know, there's no one to, 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 to account for it. And nobody gives nobody a shit. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Just don't do it. You know what? It. I have to say, I mean, since you're already pontificating, I might as well let you know, too. First of all, I'm very happy with your order because I feel like those are actual entree items. Right. So I feel like there's enough. Um, but I was actually just talking with Edwin, who who did my my prosthetic makeup, about this yesterday when I said, Edwin, is Taco Bell getting stingy with so the hamburger stingy. meat? And he was like, for the cheapest <gasps> meat that they offer, I don't know why it is so stingy. And then I don't think there's an excuse for Delta Co. or for Taco Bell to ever have stale shells. Why mm. would the st- why would the shells be stale when you move that product so fast? Yeah. What the fuck's going on? It literally comes out of a box in a sealed like, yeah. you know, to keep it crunchy. There's like, nothing like I I'm so confused. I, you know what? I could go off about both of those. Also Can Taco Bell's that? like recently been been called uh the healthiest fast food place to Cuz their meats oatmeal. Did I hear that on Very Delta? Yeah, I don't know I'm fine what, with what, it. I'm fine. Know, with, I, I like where, it. I don't know where I get my facts anymore. I like it. Yeah. 
I just can't be spending $13 for a fucking combo and then be done with it and be like, you know what? I I could actually have more. Like, and I get it. Like, I'm a behemoth. Like, I know I come through the wall like Mr. Fucking, like the Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid man. Yeah. It's not a secret, right? I've seen you crash through walls. Right, you yeah. have. So I'm going to have an appetite, right? That's not, don't be surprised. <laughs> like, oh, I can't believe you did that, bitch. Yes, you can believe it. <laughs> yes, you did, baby. You believe that I went and I got something off the dollar menu to eat before I got home. Okay, you knew that I ate some of your fries and then I evened them out. Knock it off. What I'm saying is, if you're charging that much for the fucking food, then just give me the Just say, our tacos are now $10, but make it a $10 taco. How much does it cost an employee to put 16 other packets of Diablo sauce? It, you, that's what Nothing. I want to know. It, comes, it doesn't come out of their pay. In fact, they have boxes and boxes and boxes of them. Uh Uh-huh. You know who else is funny? Four? You want to know who else is funny? You probably order a medium drink. I see you ordering a medium drink. I don't see you. I actually don't order a drink. I know. You have wine at home or whatever. A special wine for your your Taco Supreme. But here's the thing. Carl's Jr. has always charged, at least the past like five years or whatever, $3.39 for their large drink. A large drink... People usually say it's a 44 ounce. It's The cup is 40 ounces. A medium drink is 32 ounces. They recently made their medium their large drink mm-hmm. and kept it at $3.39. Oh, that's not fair. That is not fair. No, I, I can Jr., understand. You fucking louse. I understand you can, you can, you know, like ease back on the size of something because sure. in, in America, like they're, if for instance, McDonald's are getting rid of the fountain sodas. Like you can't, they're phasing those out. Did you know that? Wait, I'm sorry. McDonald's is phasing out the soda machines. Phasing out the soda machines. So you can't just go up and, and refill your drink. Oh, in you the soda refill machine. yourself. But yeah. they'll make you one back there. Right. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what my point is because why is it every time we start talking like my edibles kick in? Because that's how it is. Listen to this letter. <laughs> Dear Delta about. and fabulous guest, I love your show. Every week I anticipate the crucial information you deliver, how to be frugal and deal with cunts while looking glamorous <laughs> and beautiful. My question is, what is the very Delta way to quit a job? I just sent a five page. I know how. I know. I, well, go ahead. I'm going to say this here because I know you know. Um, I just sent a five page quitting letter to my bosses detailing all the ways I have felt disgusted and disrespected after only a month of employment. Mm -hmm. These fools are running a chaotic and nasty cafe that will definitely go out of business within six months. Mm -hmm. It Mm -hmm. felt so satisfying and cunty to read them down. Mm -hmm. Have you or your guest ever quit a job and left your boss gagging? If you had to quit a terrible job today, how would you serve cunt while doing it? Thank you so much. Very Lee. Um, Lee, I'm gonna pretty you- mu- Lee pretty much d- does what Delta would. But first of all, Delta would, as I, if you want to be very Delta, like the actual Delta work, um, first of all, you would just straight up walk off. Yeah. Yeah. First, you would just walk off, be like, done, had enough. I don't have to explain shit to you. But when it's time, if they ask you, right. and they're like, what, what happened? You would do exactly what Lee did. Yeah. You'd be like, you want to hear what I have to say? Yeah. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to list it in the most articulate, fucking pointed way so you never have to ask that question with to me again. Why? I'm going to tell you why. Clearly, no questions after. Everything is just going to be laid out. But first of all, you're just going to walk off. You're going to yeah. be like, you know what? Fuck this. Bye. I don't, I'm not going to do that. You can't. You can't. I. I can't. And that. And that's. What, and that's where the Gemini Aquarius thing kind of goes together. This is why we're we're paired so nicely together as friends and right. and lovers. Uh-huh. Um. And um. Yeah. I would. I would probably do the same. I'd just be like, you know what? No. I. I. Got, I just straight up got to go. I've. I've done it so many times in my life where I'm just like, if I've had it, if I've had enough. Listen, another job opportunity is right around the corner, and I am that confident about it. Really, though, you just have to be. You know, because it's either that or put up with bullshit. Mm-hmm. So just just straight up walk out. And I think Lee. Am I wrong about that with no, you? No, no you're 100 percent right. Yeah, million percent right. And I think um, I've seen you do it. Yeah, and I think we're on the same page with yeah. Lee. I'm glad Lee stu- you stood up for yourself. I'm glad you knew like you're gonna have. I mean, listen, there's a million cafes out there. I don't know in what capacity you work there, but there's a million people that need somebody there that is quick and about it and is gonna tell people that work there, hey. 
we need to make this happen. This is how it's going mm-hmm. to work. You don't want to be around places where people are not going to facilitate your best. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Or appreciate your best. Absolutely not. Gross. No, no. Have you ever worked? You worked at McDonald's, but have you ever worked at a cafe? No, I've never really did like actual like food service where I had to like be a waiter. I did. I did kind of sh- briefly while I was in college. I worked at a really like um, expensive uh, convalescent. Mm-hmm. community for older people like the original tony the tiger and his wife lived there oh my god they were like old you know people and i and we served food to them and they actually got a menu evening uh every evening for dinner or lunch whatever mm-hmm. um but otherwise no you know but what i'm but but lee lee is doing it correctly it's like if you if if it's enough if you've had enough and they're not treating you correctly they're being unfair uh it's not your vibe you, you just gotta go yeah you do. I'm also a hypocrite because I worked for Mac for or in cosmetics for a long time. I worked for Mac and and I uh, basically wanted to leave like five years before and I waited for them to fire me because I figured that was the only way that they could like after 10 years, I figured that if they fired me or let me go, that that would be the closest thing for me to get unemployment. And it actually did work for a while. Yeah. But I mean, you were working it out for yourself. So, you know, you might as well. And that's the thing also with quitting. Some people say, well, you know, you have to give two week notice, baby. You don't have to give anybody. No, no. Nobody's fucking two week. No, they're the not going to give you. That mean? What are you gonna, they what, will yeah. never give you two week notice. They're going to no. tell you goodbye. Get out. Walk out. Uh-huh. I love, I love walking out. I love walking out. Uh-huh. I love that. I love the, the statement and the, and the, and the posture and grandeur mm-hmm. of saying, you know what? Fuck you. I am out of here. Mm-hmm. You don't get any more of my time. I am too good for this situation and I am getting the fuck out of here. That is my favorite, favorite. Like It's ugh. the best. I love seeing people on TikTok who, get, who work at Walmart and they get on the microphone oh, and they're, oh, bitch, and they let have. Oh, joy. Why not? Why not? They're never going to give you a two-week notice. No. Never. And if you do get the... I mean, this is not the 80s. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's really not. Exactly. It doesn't work that way. And then when you did have a two-week notice, everybody's a fucking uncomfortable. Yeah. Bitch, tell them to fuck off. How about that? Uh, the the two-week notice is for like, you know what? Another wonderful venture is on the horizon right. for me. And I want to let you know that I'm leaving, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm, I'm going to go do something else. So, But I'll do the courtesy of giving you guys two-week notice. But if they're fucking with you and you're unhappy, get the hell out. Mm-hmm. The universe will provide you with another more fulfilling and gratifying way to make money. Yeah. But, you know, you said like you were a hypocrite. I don't think you were a hypocrite. I think we have to le- we have to experience it to learn it to go. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm not going to do that anymore. Talking about it in that way is also very much like it's a very like um, it's a luxury as queer people who don't have children or families to take sure. care of. You know, uh, you know, everybody in your household pretty much has their own gig. Right. Mm-hmm. And makes their own money. But can you imagine being in a situation where you hate your job and you have like an entire family to take care of? So of I do have I have empathy for that. And I and cry I for unborn that. children, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. totally. Mm-hmm. Um, this yeah. has been fun. We're done? We're done. Ew. Fucking work is done here. Hate this. I'm going to quit. What, am I, I'm, I'm, what, what if we walked out right now just like this? Like, well, I'm walking out of here. I'm fucking walking out and I'm going to the vegan ramen place. What do you think they would say? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. You think they would just let they would just let me be like exist like this. Yeah. Where would somebody have a problem with this if I walked in? Just down this street. You think I know there's a 99 cent store up the way. Do you think that they would have a problem with this? Uh, no, you're if we're talking about you walking literally down the street from here, we're Universal Studios is a block away. True. So they would be like, um, are you on the clock? Well, we're also talking about <laughs> me walking up that hill to Universal Studios. Never. No, there's Fucking an escalator, never. bitch. No, I know, but I have to walk across the street. Oh, I'm right. going to Uber across the street. <laughs> you know, girl, bye. A mess. Thank you all so much for listening to Very Delta and watching Very Delta. We come out every Monday. Please subscribe to Mom Podcast right here on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode. Search for Very Delta on your favorite podcast apps and subscribe to Mom Plus of your choice for even more Very Delta. You can send all your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com and you can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. And people can, of course, find you on my Instagram mostly where I spend a lot of time. My phone tells me. 
mm-hmm. sometimes about seven to eight hours a day. My my I mean, phone actually tells me that. It does. It's like you've yeah. spent a third of your day here, but I'm like, yeah. the other the other two thirds, I'm asleep. Yeah. So like, I mean, what are you going to do? Like, totally. Um, you can find me on Instagram. Yeah, that's really it. I'm not on X, Twitter, whatever the fuck it's called. And um, you know, don't be disappointed when you come to my Instagram and I don't post often. Really? I don't. When do I post Delta? Like once a month? Like you'll post pictures where you're like, like Filtered. you do this thing, like you like where you have like a lot of red lipstick on, oh, and yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. blue eyeshadow, and you're like, oh, so much love to you, Chile. Well, I so feel much like love, I, I, I really, honestly, it's an obligation. Like if it were up to me, I would just like sit in a corner it's an and, obligation? and talk to myself. I just got to tell you before we leave that from in profile, you look like a Whoville, like a who of who. I like that, but like kind of like. A t- the tweaker in Whoville. No, I look like Psychedella. <laughs> this is my Psychedella. Well, that's what I meant. The tweaker of Whoville. That's for, that's who I'm going to be at Lacage. <laughs> Psychedella. You can also follow the show on Instagram and TikTok at Very Delta because if you're not, you're really only getting half the Delta. Join me next week right here, and until then, keep things Very Delta. Yeah. This episode of Very Delta was brought to you by Orange Diamond, the official emoji of the Very Delta show. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. 